Good afternoon, my name is Darwin Rashid and today here I'm here to present uh, our paper on reproducibility of retinal vascular phenotypes obtained with optical current tomography and geography. Basically OCTA for short and how vessel segmentation plays a role in all of this. So why even OCTA? So OCTA is an effective uh, imaging modality that captures the finest vasculature within the retina in high resolution. So, and this non-invasive uh, nature of OCTA has consolidated this technology as an investigative, uh, you know, tool for the detection of retinal vasculature uh, changes associated with retinal diseases in the eye, as well as systematic conditions that manifest in the eye. Among these applications, OCTA has shown considerable potential in, being, in maybe one day providing insight into diseases of the brain that are known to have a microvascular component. The idea is that if there's an association with, between retinal vasculature phenotypes and the cerebral uh, uh, phenotypes, then this could eventually lead to a very powerful, non-invasive way uh, to detect brain diseases before even the clinical symptoms manifest. You know, this is the, an association that is, un, you know, that's related to biology, uh, not, not more so the clinical uh, side of things. So the aim for OCTA eventually is to be uh, useful for monitoring vascular pathologies non-invasively. And recently, you know, they have found, you know, that there are right retinal microvascular phenotypes that mirror even the cerebral vascular changes in Alzheimer's disease, for example. So OCT is interesting and it can be very powerful. It can be it can has potential to be a very powerful tool into analysis for brain diseases. So before we even get there, there are some challenges in OCTA. So one being reproducibility, as in how reproducible it is. Uh, how, how reproducible a phenotype is, you know, between a baseline image and a repeated image, you know, because uh, we know that uh, when, you know, a baseline image and a repeated image, there's going to be changes in the biology of the person. If you drink coffee, it might change something in the eye and the other reasons, etc. But we need to identify a variety of vasculature phenotypes that are reproducible across repeated images of the same eye the same imaging device, regardless of any noise and artifacts that come into capturing the image. So the current literature has shown that there are reproducible retinal vasculature phenotypes, but they are usually related to vessel density and the foveal vascular zone morphology. Recently, uh, I mean, less is known about the reproducibility of phenotypes that capture finer geometrical properties of the networks themselves. Recently, a study proposed a novel approach to phenotyping fovea-centered OCT images based on the expanding on, based on expanding the set of commonly used phenotypes like vessel density and uh, foveal vascular zone morphology to include information about the geometry of the foveal and the paravoveal subregions. Furthermore, they even demonstrated that these phenotypes were useful for classifying image uh, classifying images that are related to diseases of diabetic retinopathy and chronic uh, kidney disease. Uh, from patients against control with uh, and but this variety of newly introduced uh, phenotypes have not uh, been shown to be reproducible as of yet They've, you know it's not been established and this is something we have uh, aimed to address in this uh, study so uh, another problem is how does vessel segmentation play a role in this you know, we know a key step in phenotype discovery is vessel segmentation, and you know, a, a bunch, there's a number of analysis pipelines that have been even proposed for automate, automated segmentation that range from traditional vessel enhancement and threshold and thresholding approaches to even more recent deep learning models. However, they have shown that these widely used retinal phenotypes are indeed sensitive to the choice of segmentation method. And uh, we're in this study, we're seeing how consistent or not consistent they are uh, with these new uh, phenotypes that were mentioned. So we're, let's go on to methodology. So the images were obtained from a cognitively healthy 
patients at least 50 years of age. Uh, Duke University has provided us with the uh, data and uh, you know, we used 44 pairs of macular superficially capillary plexus images due to the, um, the relatively improved visualizations of microvasculature in the superficially capillary plexus as compared to the deep uh, retinal plexus. You know, patients had multiple OCT images obtained from one or both of the eyes on the same day, uh, you know, for baseline and repeated. The participants were imaged using Zeiss Series HD 5000 with angioplex and there were no ground truth vessel segmentations for this study. And the, image quality, the images themselves were verified by a trained uh, grader, so the, an expert would assess the quality of the images and they were used for this study. So the experiment set up, two parts of the experiment set up. The first is to conduct a statistical test to uh, compare the retinal phenotypes from pairs of repeated images and uh, an optimally oriented flux algorithm was used for vessel segmentation due to the lack of ground truth. This algorithm was found to uh, perform really well and even outperform other vessel enhancement filters and methods in the absence of, man, uh, of ground truth, which uh, is the case for this study. And then the second part of this uh, experiment setup is to conduct the statistical tests to compare the renal phenotypes of the same images, so not uh, repeated images, same images using two different vessel segmentation methods. And that will be the OOF and Frangi. So the first part of the pipeline is uh, vessel segmentation, so OOF or Frangi, and then the bi uh, uh, binary image is produced, and then that gets skeletized, and then you transform the skeletized image to a graph object, and then um, and then the network is then divided into five, su five subgraphs uh, or regions of interest: foveal, nasal, inferior, temporal, and superior. And then after you have uh, this, you extract the aforementioned retinal phenotypes uh, the, from the, based on the geometrical properties. So that's the pipeline in the experimental setup. And the, now on to the results. So this is the results of the reproducibility of the phenotypes over repeated imaging of the same eye. And what's nice to see is that uh, they all are, they are shown to be considerably consistent. They all pass the p-test, the pair p-test, and they, the z-score uh, looks good, as in the values are close to zero. So there's not, you know, large, uh, you know, variation across them. So that's very good to see. As for the second part of the study, is this is where things get a bit interesting. We do see that vessel segmentation does indeed play a role, and that the z-scores are largely uh, varied, you know, the largest being 9.4. So, and the only two that pass the p-test and have good uh, z-score are the circularity index and phase area, and that can be explained due to the fact that uh, these these metrics are captured from the center, which is a, usually a, a circle of, you know, black circle that has no vessels, so the vessel segmentation algorithm doesn't you know, affect that area very much so, but as for the rest, you can see that they're not so well. So vessel segmentation does uh, play a role, and this is for the first part, the repeatedly phenotypes of repeated images, and you can see that the best phenotype and even the worst phenotype look very good according to this histogram, and for the second part, you can see that the best phenotype does look good because that's a circularity index, but if you look on the right, you can see that according to histogram, they're not consistent at all. And that is the case for all, uh, most of the phenotypes for the second part of the study. So in the end, we've established that these phenotypes are reproducible uh, uh, and that is good for computational analysis in the future and that the vessel segmentation does indeed play a role. And there should be a discussions on establishing uh, a, fr a standard framework for uh, the OCTA retinal image analysis and these are the acknowledgements. Thank you very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed the presentation.